Hey guys, it's Yurjo93. We're going to do something different this time. We've, we've not done this in a while. So, we rank movies on this channel a lot. But now we're going to be ranking a director of mine that's one of my favorite directors, his worst movies from his best, or his worst movies to his best movies, in terms of how he's grown as a director, my thoughts on how he is as a director, what movies I enjoy, what movies I don't enjoy. So, we're going to rank all 12 Nolan movies from the worst to the best. If you guys don't know Christopher Nolan, he's most known for the Dark Knight trilogy, Interstellar, and a bunch of others. Most recently, Oppenheimer. So, here's my list for Nolan's movie. Remember, it's just my list. doesn't mean it's the right list. And, but I would love to know yours in the comments below. Let's have a nice, lively discussion. And in the meantime, let, let's, let's do it. Coming in at number 12, I have The Falling. This was Nolan kind of his, like, audition, his first up to plate study film where you kind of get to see what he's at, but, you know, there was still room to improve, and it, it wasn't anything fancy. Next thing up is Insomnia. Insomnia didn't quite work for me, but it's got some good aspects to it. I just think a lot of the other movies on this list are a bit higher because they work better, in my opinion. Next up, we gotta go, um... We got to go up with our next contender on our list, which is so we, we're done with um, with insomnia. It's time, it's time to go to um, coming in at number ten. We have um, we have the Dark Knight Rises. Now, this movie had a lot to live up to because the Dark Knight and Batman Begins are both incredible, but unfortunately, with the loss of Heath Ledger. And unfortunately, as much as we love Christopher Nolan, this movie just has too much going on. You got Talia, you got, um, you got Bane, you got so many things that they need to wrap up. Scarecrow's in this movie for a bit. There's just too much stuff going on here. The setup of having a Robin in here, but they end up, but we never get to see Justin Gordon Levitt become Robin. So unfortunately, this movie just doesn't work, and it's unfortunate because I, I think it was could be a good final film, but also the choreography uh, for the final fight in this movie is just kind of a mess. And the movie in general is a mess. I'm disappointed with how it was handled. Sorry, but this one is at the bottom. All right, coming in at number nine, we got The Prestige. Now, I don't know, too, I don't remember too much about this movie. When I rewatched it, it's an interesting concept, but it feels like old Nolan. It feels like he's still learning, still trying new different camera techniques, new different things. But it didn't really work for me. All right, coming in at number eight, we have Memento. I remember Memento very well. I think this movie was when Nolan first started to get really good. It's got some great great stuff in it, there's some great scenes here, there, there's some great action, the story they're going for really works, I think Memento is a, it's just a fantastic movie, I know it's weird to see it at number 8, but that just shows you how much, none of these movies are truly bad, it's all just personal opinion of where I like Nolan to be as a director, alright, coming in at number 7, we got, we got Interstellar here, Interstellar is one of those movies that is really interesting, because it's about space, and, you know, it's about it's about NASA, and I like NASA as much as the next guy, but I just feel like this has not really been Nolan's strong suit. It was spectacle, more spectacle than substance. There's some good storytelling here, but it didn't quite work for me. I got a little bored during the runtime. So for me, I think number seven is a pretty good place for it. It's above average. It works for me. Coming at number six, we have Dunkirk. Harry Styles' actual acting debut. Um, this is a great war film. If you guys did not see this in IMAX, this is super loud, one of the loudest movies I've seen in IMAX. This, this is a complete spectacle, but it's a pretty good movie. It's got some good action for war action movies, and it definitely delivers on the spectacle, and I think it's pretty cool. All right, coming in at number five, we have Tenet. Now, I love Tenet. This movie, a lot of people find it confusing. They find it messy, but I love this movie. Uh, Joseph... Um, uh, yeah, what's his name? Yeah, Joseph, um, David Joseph, uh, Washington, being Denzel Washington's son, is an incredible actor. He brings a great lead actor here. I would love to see him play John Stewart in the New DC Universe. I think this guy is just great. And then you have Robert Pattinson, our Batman, in this movie, and both of them, there's incredible action scenes in this movie. The way that this movie handles the concept of time travel in here and time flow is really smart and really unique, and I love the action in this movie. Some of Nolan's best work. I really enjoy it, so I get to number five. Coming in at number four, we got Batman Begins. Now, we, we all knew this was coming. Batman Begins is one of those movies that just totally works, 
and you buy it. You just know that it is it is that it is a great start. You know, you get to hear Batman. You get to hear Christian Bale say, "I'm Batman" for the first time ever. It's iconic. You got Liam Neeson playing Ra's al Ghul, which is pretty cool. Some great fight choreography in this movie. A great setup for the new, for the for the Batman universe that they built. You have Christopher Nolan has crafted a unique Batman experience after we had so many Batman movies that just didn't work, and now we get our best set of Batman movies, and it was so fun to have this happen. I really love Christopher Nolan's work with the Dark Knight uh, franchise, especially Begins and Night, which we'll get into more, but I really just liked this. I thought this was good. You introduce your team, you get Bruce in the suit, learning how to be Batman, good fight scenes, the concept of the League really works here. Um, Scarecrow's plot is really good. I love how they do the fear toxin. It's a pretty good grounded take on the Dark Knight. I like it. I like Batman Begins quite a bit. Coming in at number three, you got Inception. Now, people love this movie. I love the concept of dreams. I love how no one tells dreams. You have Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie. You have so many cool action scenes. Almost like, it almost feels like it's got like that spy James Bond flavor, just like they're kind of building up to no one becoming a Bond director. Really worked for me. All right, coming in at number two. Our runner-up is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is fantastic and just, it, it, it is a character piece about a complex man who built the greatest weapon in the history of the world. But he's also not a bad man. He's trying to do right, and he just wanted to become famous. But there's great performances in here. Robert Downey Jr. deserves to win Best Supporting Actor at the, at the Oscars. Florence Pugh is great in this movie. Um, Killian Murphy absolutely deserves to win. He's a great actor in this movie. I love how he's at. I want to see him play Doom eventually. I think this movie is great. If you guys have not seen Oppenheimer, it's my favorite movie of the year. Please check it out. It's worth your time. All right, coming in at number one. We all knew this was coming. The Dark Knight, okay? Well, what am I going to say about The Dark Knight? This movie is in the top three, maybe top four, top five, whatever, whatever list you want to be. This is one of the most essential comic book movies of all time. I mean, people, people talk about Dick writing this movie all the time because Heath Ledger died, but this movie is generally just gets better every time. You see Heath Ledger's Joker just, just works, you know? You say, my father, he was a drinker, and just... And you want to know how I get these, got these scars? No, but I know how you got these. <laughs> like, I mean, the banter between Batman and him are fantastic here. I'm going to go get him. I'm going to make this pencil disappear. Ta-da! It's gone. <laughs> like, well, I will always say Mark Hamill will always be my Joker no matter what. Um, I think for this universe, for a grounded take on Batman... Heath Ledger does the job, he, and people doubted him. I think he did an absolute job. This is the best film that we have of both uh, Christian Bale as, as Bruce Wayne and Batman. I think the dialogue with his gravelly voice here works for this movie. We get some good detective stuff. Gary Oldman's great. This movie has serious stakes with Rachel dying. It really is built up. The, the fact that we get to see Two-Face rise here and then fall again is really brilliant, and it really works. I really think this movie is fantastic, and it is the... This and Oppenheimer are the only two movies on this list that I think are genuine masterpieces, and I think they're incredible, and you can rewatch them as many times, and they only get better. So anyway, guys, these are my list for the Nolan movies. Let me know your Nolan movies. What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Let's have a nice conversation in the comments, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.